So the trade deadline has finally passed. Probably the best deadline of all time. But from the Sixers point of view, we were pretty quiet. And at the end of the day, I'm not going to harp on Daryl Morey too much because he had nothing much to work with. I feel like the Jalen McDaniels deal was a very, very good pickup. And I'm going to explain why. But right after you like, subscribe. But forget that stuff. Let's get right into the video. So as a whole, I know a lot of Sixers fans are going to be saying, why didn't we get this? Why didn't we get a backup five? I agree. Those things were necessities. However, we didn't have any assets to trade. Look around the league. The Rockets, the Jazz, the Thunder, the Spurs own so many first round picks to the point where the distribution of first round picks are pretty scarce. Not many teams have them. So teams are then going, okay, cool. If you can't trade a first round pick, I want five second round picks for a role player like GP2 and Jay Crowder. Don't get me wrong, they're very valuable players, but if second round picks are seen as the most wanted commodity for these role players, we don't have that to trade. We don't have any. We lost two bloody second round picks for tampering for Daniel House and PJ Tucker. Very in mind, Daniel House doesn't play. And as a whole, we don't have many assets. So there's nothing really much Darren Mori could have done. I would have liked to see in the backup five like Drummond back. But like I said, the Bulls could have easily went, look, if Jay Crowder's worth five, we want four for Drummond. We don't have that to trade. So that wasn't feasible. Now, on the Matisse Stiebel side of things, the trade first Matisse Stiebel was essentially getting two second round picks for Portland, which were directed to the Charlotte Hornets for Jalen McDaniels. And the return for Matisse Stiebel and Jalen McDaniels I'm happy with, but on the surface level, two second round picks for Matisse Stiebel? If GP2 is worth five, who else is worth five? Jay Crowder and probably someone else, I'm forgetting who. I'm pretty sure we could have at least got three for Matisse. By the end of the day, we've got Jalen McDaniels out of it, who I'm very intrigued by as a player. I feel like for those of you who aren't familiar with his game, he's a very long athletic defender. He's around 6'9", 6'10". He's switchable. He has a good offensive game. He can cut to the basket. Three-point shooting-wise, he's not that much for upgrade on Matisse that with percentage-wise. However, I will confidently say he is a better shooter and off Offensively can give you a lot more than Thibault and it gives us a lot of much needed length because our starting five, I mean starting four PJ Tucker is only six foot five at the end of the day. So I do feel like this trade is going to be beneficial. By the end of the day, it doesn't matter who we acquire because Doc Rivers, is he going to use him correctly? Is he even going to play J Mac? Who knows? But from what Daryl Morey could really work with, I feel like he did a very good job. So for you guys that are going at his neck, come on now, there's not really much he could have done. But the backup five situation, as we all know, with the limited resources we had, it was a shame we couldn't get anything done. Because honestly, I'm fed up of seeing Montrezl Harrell scream eight times, try and rip the rim down, but also let the opposition score 20 points in the paint within five minutes. And we're like, come on now. I'm fed up of blowing leads when Montrezl Harrell's on the floor. And I'm not telling you Paul Reed's perfect. He averages eight fouls per 36 minutes. He's really a raw prospect. However... I'd still rather see Paul Reed at the backup five because even though he might foul a lot, I'd rather him be in the game, get a couple stops, foul, then you go, right, we have to play Montrez at the backup five instead because Paul Reed's in foul trouble. Rather than seeing Montrez Harrell give up that many points in the paint, being undersized and can't defend a lick. Now, how do you expect Paul Reed to develop as a defender when you don't play him in the regular season? But I've had enough of ranting about Paul Reed. That's not what this video is about. I feel like as a whole, Maury did really well with the assets he had available because people who are screaming, why didn't we get this guy? Look at our roster. We have Cork Mars who requested a trade. No one wanted him. He stinks, so he's still on the roster. Daniel House, who essentially cost us a second round pick for tampering. Who the hell wants Daniel House? Those two guys aren't in our rotation. And what makes you think any NBA GM with a functioning brain would want any of those two players? They stink. Realistically, they'll be out of the league when their contracts are done. They're not good players. So why do you think a team would go, you know what, Daryl, let's help you out. We will give you this productive player for Daniel. Of course not. So honestly... It's a shame that we have such little assets and how many assets have been wasted. But from what Mori could do, I feel like he did a pretty decent job. Now, we still do have that open roster spot. And I know Daryl said we're either going to fill that via trade or via the buyout market. But looking at the buyout candidates, I don't feel like the Sixers will be very active because you've got the likes of Reggie Jackson, Russell Westbrook, John Wall, who will likely be bought out. 
who are all guards and we don't need any more guards. I feel like the buyout market is going to be very guard centric and not that many bigs, if any. So I don't really feel like we'll be active in that regard. The only name I'd be semi intrigued by, let me explain myself, is Danny Green. And I know his tenure with the Sixers wasn't the best and I know a lot of fans didn't really like Danny Green but for the vet minimum let's be real Danny Green was still productive and still helped this team I would happily take Danny Green back back on his roster for 1.6 million for the rest of the season let's not be ridiculous so if he gets bought out by Houston I'd definitely be interested in uh re reunition no be just to be reunited with Danny Green you know what I'm trying to say I really wouldn't mind that but yeah, I don't really know where we go from here because we still have no backup five. We still have Montrez Harrell. We still have Doc Rivers. So we're screwed. No, I'm joking. I ain't trying to be negative today. But overall, Gray Darren Moore's trade deadline is C+. You might go, that's too high. What the hell? No, come on. I've already explained that he couldn't do much with the assets we had. So a C+, plus, he did a decent job. Jalen McDaniel should be able to help this team. Will Doc Rivers play him? We don't know. But yeah. So that's all I really got for this video. Thank you guys so much for listening, watching. More Sixers content on the way. Stay blessed, my people, and I'm out. Peace.